For the following exercises, find the x and y intercepts of the graphs of each function. Okay, so let's start with the first one. f of x equals 2 times the absolute value of x plus 1 minus 10. Okay, so um, I'm just going to write up here. Let, let's first work with the x-intercepts. Okay, now remember, the x-intercept is when the function, and specifically this function, crosses the x-axis. So technically, it's when y equals 0. A lot of students get confused about that one. But the x-intercept, you can think of it as x has a number, whoop, x has a number, and y is 0. If I drew a little graph here, just a quick graph, the x-intercept is any time that the graph, so let's do an absolute value graph, an absolute value graph always has a v shape. So if you see a v shape, you know it's an absolute value graph. The x-intercept is when um, your graph crosses the x-axis. So in this case, there's two x-intercepts here. There's the one over here and the one over here. And both times, the y-coordinate was 0. There was no, zero, uh, there was no y number. It's all x's. And then we can say the same or the opposite for the y-intercept. The y-intercept, and maybe I'll just put that down, the y-intercept is when x equals 0. You will have a number for y, so y has a number. And if I just draw a little graph again, and if I draw a v-shaped, that's an absolute value graph. Anytime that you see a v, it's an absolute value graph. Anytime that it crosses the y-axis, that's your y-intercept. So you only have one y-intercept here. And technically, since I didn't cross the x-axis, let's just pretend this was a little shy of crossing, there was no x-intercept here. There was only one y-intercept. Okay. So that just kind of puts things into perspective. Well... Let's figure it out. Now, remember from previous chapters that f of x is just a fancy way for saying y, right? So f of x, anytime that you see f of x, it's just a y value. So if it's easier for you to plug in y, be my guest. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say this is now y equals 2 times the absolute value of x plus 1 minus 10. Whichever one you want to solve for first, we've got to solve for both of them. So let's do the x-intercept first. So the x-intercept is when y equals 0. So I'm going to plug a 0 in for the y value. So now I get something like this. 0 equals 2 times x plus 1 minus 10. Let's try it out. I have to solve for x. That's what we're doing. So let's see here. The first thing I got to do is I'm going to plus 10 on both sides. This cancels out. We have a 10 equals 2 times x plus 1, the absolute value of x plus 1. And now I want to, uh, you know, get x by itself. It's trapped inside that absolute value. So I'm going to get rid of the 2 first. I will divide by 2 on both sides. So I have 5 equals the absolute value of x plus 1. And that all equals 5. I can't really do much here. Everything is trapped in the absolute value. So remember, and we've done tons of problems before, if you haven't, check those out first. Uh, go, go back into the playlist and, and check those out. But once we're at this stage of the game, you can separate the two equations. Remember, one is always going to equal 5, the other one's going to equal 
negative 5, or one's going to equal the number that they told you, the other one is going to equal the negative number. So 5 equals x plus 1, and then negative 5 equals x plus 1. And solve for your x's. So in this case, for the equation on the left, I will subtract 1, subtract 1, so we have an x equals 4 as one answer. And then if I subtract 1 and I subtract 1, this would be x equals a negative 6. So in this case, you have two x-intercepts, 4 and 6, uh, 4 and negative 6. So let me just erase this, and let's see, okay, just so that I have room to do the y's. So let's just write them in notation. So the x-intercepts would be 4, 0, and negative 6, 0, because the y's have to be equal to 0. And those are your two x-intercepts. So if I drew a graph, I would have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. I would have an x-intercept here. And then all the way to the negative 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Those would be your two x-intercepts in which your graph crosses the line. So, I mean, it's probably going to be something like this. Whee! See that? It's always got to have the v. Now, let's just see what the y-intercept is. And remember, the y-intercept is when x equals 0. So, if I plug our equation in again, all we're doing now is we're plugging in a 0 for the x value, and we're solving for the y. So, let's give it a go. y equals 2 times the absolute value of 0 plus 1 minus 10. So y equals 2 times the absolute value 0 plus 1 is 1, minus 10. The absolute value of 1 is just 1, but if it was a negative, it would be the positive answer. So y equals 2 times 1, minus 10. And then if you just do your math, 2 times 1 is 2, negative 10, 2 minus a negative 10 is a negative 8. And that is your y-intercept. So we will say the y-intercept here would be 0, comma, negative 8. And there are your two answers. So you have one y-intercept and you have two x-intercepts. Okay. Let's do the next one. Same exact idea. First, I'm going to do is I'm going to get this f of x out of here and say that this is y equals 4 times the absolute value of x minus 3 plus 4. So let's do the x-intercept first. And remember, the x-intercept means that y is 0. You have to find a number for x. So the 0 is going to be plugged in for the y, and we're going to solve. So 0 equals 4 times the absolute value of x minus 3 plus 4. Let's see. I'm going to solve for x. I need to get it by itself. I'm going to subtract 4 first. Get rid of that. This would be negative 4 equals 4 times the absolute value of x minus 3. We need to get the absolute value by itself. It's being multiplied by 4, so I can divide by 4 to get rid of that. And now negative 4 divided by 4 is a negative 1 equals the absolute value of x minus 3. Hmm, okay, so this part is completely fine. You've basically done all that you can so that the only thing that's left is that absolute value. However, is an absolute value going to equal a negative number? No, that's right. It will only equal the positive number because that's what absolute values do. They always give you out the positive number. So are there any x-intercepts? Absolutely not. So 
mainly because this does not make sense. This should not have been a negative one. Should have been just a one. So since that the since that's the case, there are no x intercepts. There are no points on the graph in which this graph crosses that that x axis. So if I quickly draw a graph, my graph does not draw uh, cross this axis. So it could have been a v up here. You see how it doesn't cross. Um, you know, maybe it's a v over here. It just doesn't cross the x-axis. Pretty cool, right? Okay, so I'm just going to get rid of all this. And now let's do the y-intercept. Okay, so remember, the y-intercept is where x equals 0. You need to find a number for y. So you plug in a 0 for the x. So let's see, y equals for absolute value of 0 minus 3 and then plus 4. So let's just do step by step. y equals 4 times the absolute value of 0 minus 3 is a negative 3 plus 4. And now this is where it's super important. What is the absolute value of negative 3? Remember, absolute values are always going to bring out the positive number. So this would just be a 3. Anytime there's a negative in here, it automatically gives you the positive answer. And then you just continue on. Now we just do the math, right? This would be y equals 12 plus 4, and then essentially y equals 16. So we do have a y-intercept. We don't have a x-intercept. And in this case, the y-intercept would be 0, comma, 16, because a 0 for the x, a number for the y. And there are your answers. No x-intercept for this function, and you have one y-intercept at 0, comma, 16. Guys, this was fun. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Hopefully this helped. Um, if it did, give it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you would like. Uh, and yeah, keep studying hard. We got tons more videos coming your way. I hope you guys have an awesome day. That rhymed. <laughs> um, and I'll see you all in the next video. Happy studying.